Welcome to our Canyon Corset, where this is one video of many videos that cover canyon rope systems with Brent Roth here in the Pacific Northwest who likes canyoning. And we want to talk about the different devices that you can use in a twin, isolated, releasable system. Nailed to, it. <laughs> because uh, there are a lot of different devices and a lot of different ways and things, and it's what you said the most I, I think it's the one system that I've seen the most different ways to rig. And, and the thing is why you would want to pick each one. Doing this course with him, I now could probably replicate almost everything in it if I were to be tested. But if I went down a canyon, I wouldn't really know which one to use for a situation yet. I have book knowledge, not experience. But why would I use a joker, which is two eights opposing each other up here, versus uh, the camp lowering device. Ovo. Ovo. So we're going to show you that in this video where we have the line scale three here. We're going to measure in pounds of force. We're going to use freedom units because there's going to be, it's, it's under two or 300 pounds of force in order to get this to move. I don't want to be dealing with 0 0.5, 0 0.6 kilonewtons and we got to pick pounds or kilograms and it's America. So don't get hung up on the units of measurement. Get hung up on the difference between this being 100 pounds and then this being 300 pounds. Brent loves tinkering and he made a mechanical disadvantage. And so we have a fixed point here on the bottom and is going through a pulley. So we can basically step in this and generate more force than we even weigh. But we're going to try to pull this as slowly as possible and see when it starts to start coming undone and releasing without anybody hanging on to the end of the rope. Because in your isolated, twin isolated releasable systems, you have to tend the other side or be mindful of it. Yep, exactly. And we're not gonna be mindful about it. Nope. We wanna find out how much friction each device giving us. Right. And I would kind of consider that the higher friction, the safer it could be in the, in the you, event that somebody lets go of this, like how much I need to pay attention to it. That's all. But the is. higher friction, if you need to lower somebody, the harder it could be to give could them the slack that they exactly. need. Exactly. Um, a couple reasons they might need slack is you need the rope longer because you, you want the rope just right above the water level so you're not swimming with the rope. Uh, rescuing, indirect rescue, is that what you call it? Yep. Indirect rescue, so if I'm stuck in the water going and you can just lower me out of my problem. Can you do that again? <laughs> and then the other reason you would want to lower somebody is abrasion. Yep. So if something's rubbing, you can move that point so it's not just rubbing on the same spot the whole way. Correct. So the first system we have here is a joker and it's rigged up to where I have the same friction on both sides. Notice that this strand entered in this side and came out and this one came from the back. And that's because there's two devices here that are stacked. It gives you a different space here. So we're going to try this mode first and see what the friction is and then flip it um, the other way and see how much of a difference it is. So let's go ahead and pull this one. Here's your mechanical disadvantage. All right. Choke up on that. And here we go. And we're slipping. But you're in the upper 200s. Yeah. Uh, 220, 230. 220, 220, 200, 2. Oh, here we go. Yeah, 240, 230, 220. Let's flip these into the other friction mode yep. and find out if that's higher or lower. Right, exactly. Oh, it's more friction. This is taking a bit more. Yep. And you're barely moving. Oh, it takes 300 before you start moving. Yeah, so there's definitely a difference in where you, how you're you getting put the strands through. You're getting what? 30. So I'm dropping. You are, you are moving. You yeah. are moving. Ready? Yeah. Yeah, here we go. Wow, it's, it's. Oh, I'm on a roll now. <laughs> it's in the 300 range. It's almost. Go. Okay, so that took maybe 20-30% more. Yep. Having it go through, I guess, with, how would you describe this? The eight that's on top or facing out 
um, the, the rope that I'm going to put on that eight, I'm coming from the back side and through. That's the higher friction mode. Yep. And then the eight that's in the back, this is the rope that's going to go on the eight in the back. I'm going through the towards front. Towards the back. Towards the back. Around that. And that was the higher friction mode. This is an eight millimeter rope. 8.7. with a Dyneema sheath, which Correct. is a very slippery material. Yeah. So if you're using a higher friction rope, a nine, what, 9.5 Tagnora rope, that's just, you're going to want different it's stuff. Be a lot. That's why if you have lighter people, heavier people. Yeah, that's why the number is pretty irrelevant and, and it's yeah. just there for comparison. Or the unit of measurement yes. is irrelevant. But we still need the comments in there that say, why are you using pounds? How much force was that? Campovo. Put some mechanical disadvantage on that. We're already moving. We're already moving. At around 130, 140 pounds. It's also going through the ring, so there's additional friction. 150, 150. Seems to be pretty consistent. So this is half of the fast version. You would have to tend this because I'm 160 pounds, and if I'm repelling with my full weight, yep. that'll put on 160 yep. pounds. If I'm not repelling smoothly, I can generate more force, but it's for, for sure. short peaks. Yep. So you would want to hang on to that or I would slip and fall. Exactly. Exactly. And yeah. once I start moving, I'm going to keep moving. In theory, like I said, again, with all of these systems, you want to maintain. You always want to maintain. Maintain the other strand or it needs to be in somebody's repel device. But I've always been curious of like, how careful how much of a do you have to be? How much of what, a like what, what's really walking on thin ice versus block ice? Because the high friction mode and the joker mode, I'm not 300 pounds. Right. Okay. Oh, oh, look at you. An extra carabiner. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. There's 120 to 160 was before. We're definitely over 200. You're at 260 right now. Yeah. Okay. Get that leg workout, bud. You yeah, got right. this. And Mechanical disadvantage. Here we go. Yeah, 250, 260. 120 to 160 yeah. to 260. Yeah, so you can, you can see what's happening just like when we threaded the joker system in opposite direction. Yeah. Putting a tighter bend radius into something. That's all I did. You see, I've made that rope. Stick out further. Tighter. Yep, stick out further on both sides and it increased significantly. So if you found you didn't like that with the first person going down, you could just throw in another carabiner mm -hmm. and be like, or, or a bigger person's coming and you're like, you can adjust it on the spot. Yep, yep. Or they got a pack on or whatever. Nice shirt change. Yeah, I had to strip off a layer because I'm the one doing all the work here. <laughs> the leg presses are getting to you. Uh, so what do we have here? The totem. Yeah, so the totem, same configuration. I'm just curious to see how much of a difference it is because like I said, in all of these devices, even though they appear to have the same features, like these, these the holes in here might not be the same length, the same width. Yeah, it's actually like the holes are longer. about one third shorter. Yeah, so I'm gonna say right now we're gonna get higher friction than what we did initially. And if I even can get another carabiner in there, it's definitely- I think this will produce different results. Too much. Oh, now we go. Now we're going. 220, 220, Okay. There we go. This being shorter adds significantly more friction. Yeah, the space, the space. It's on not the just gradually going around the carabiner. It's, it's sharply sharp. going yep. around the carabiner. Let's give it a go. I'm also using. Do you this. need a leg pump? Are you getting tired? I might do it. Not moving. We're gonna have to go with the multiplier. We're gonna have to uh, use some. <laughs> Towed them with two carabiners. I towed them. You are not even moving. There it is. So you move, move around 370 pounds. Yeah. Now, if you do have too much friction, I saw you adjusting this, you can feed this through. Yep. 
just and pulling pulling this strand up. And once you help. give this slack, then okay. you're down. To your then I could even just exactly easily pull that exactly because okay. obviously I don't. Sometimes I want the rope to move when if it's an abrasion issue. Yeah. I don't want to rely on the repeller pulling the rope. Yeah. So I'm feeding that in, but I want to be careful not to just create a ton of slack because if that in that moment that person goes, like they'd go down. Yes. And if I'm trying to gently go over an edge, and then I just boom shins. Yep. Polycoa pivot in the hangman configuration. Notice a lot less hardware. Okay. And here so we go. So this is a four to one mechanical disadvantage. Yep. Try to hold that. Four twenty, four thirty, four forty, four. It's not even moving. You're just. Yeah, I think the rope is just settling. It's just everything stretching at this point. Yeah, right. So you're at. You, so here you're in the. Go. Five sixty. It's still. It's still not. It, this is actually sliding on the eight. Yeah, this did not move at five twenty ish. No. So you're at, at two kilonewtons, this does not slide. Right. So in order for me to give you slack, I would have to undo the other side. Literally, literally just undo this other side. Yeah. So should we see what this is? Yeah, slide it up. You're confident? Oh, there it goes. No, so that's what I was talking about. As soon as it starts moving, yeah. it's just gonna rip. There's nothing. There was nothing. How much force does that take? See if you can get it to move. Yeah. Three, four hundred. Uh, ah, a... 420, 440, 450. Whoa, buddy, careful. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, down we go. <laughs> so yeah, that makes quite a bit of a difference. It is nice to know that this is pretty safe if well, yeah. you weren't paying attention. Damn near locked off. <laughs> Damn near. <laughs> Which you could technically lock it off doing yep. something, right? Do it, yep. Just like you did there, do a cleat of some kind on one side. It's simple lock off. So next we have the critter. Step up to mount my horse. <laughs> Why didn't you get on the top step, man? <laughs> oh my God. All right. There we go. I'm, I'll spot you, dude. And pulling. Is that what it is? Oh, it's moving. Four, 450, 460, it's starting to move. 5.30, 5.30, it's barely there. It's 5.50, 5.50, 5.40, Wow, that's some friction, man. So what do you think of that? I mean, I trust it. All right, what's next? This is the hoodoo. Hoodoo? Hoodoo do you do? Same thing, right? It's a yep. symmetrical device yep. that you can put one leg on one side, one leg on the other, and you're right. not crossing one side with nope. the other. Nope, absolutely correct. All right, mount so, your horse. Simple. You're barely moving it. You're you're in the 500 pound range. Nope. You're not moving this. There, there you is. go. There you go. High 500s. That's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. So you're curious if this is gonna be 50% of the force. But I don't think it is because no, what no. happens over here is reduced by this ring and all right. of this. So you actually like, 10 pounds here gives you like 50 pounds of friction on this side. Right, so uh, it's not half, but I'm just Hold on. Hold on. curious to see. Hold on. I'm gonna go for a ride. This is built oh, rope. see, so as soon as it broke free. Okay, let go. Yeah, it's, so it's zero. So you do one side, it's essentially it's zero. So that's some, definitely worth taking note of with these systems, as soon as I unload one side, so if for some reason I think I, I need to, I got, still have way too much friction, and I take this fully out. It's not half. It's not <laughs> half, like you, it's definitely, I've basically reduced it to just like a regular eight would be, I would say even less than a month. Unless, it's, yeah, where you, you have to hang on. Yeah. Have to. And, and so you definitely want to be prepared for Disclaimer. that. Disclaimer, you have to hang on in any of these systems. <laughs> there, I'm not to get sued. <laughs> right. The hangman method, I think, gives me simplicity. It gives me ease of use, and it really gave me the highest friction with all of that. So that's like a win, 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 win. So people should do this for the first time when they go out in a canyon and not practice at home. Oh, exactly. Right? Oh, okay. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely not. And they should definitely try canyoning after watching a couple of YouTube videos if they've never done yeah. it. Yeah. Um, now, don't get me wrong. I've used. Uh, a few of these different ones in a canyon, and it's, again, all dependent on the environment and whatever I'm doing, the conditions. The rope you're using. Exactly. How many people, the weight of the people, all that right. stuff. Uh, hit stuff that looks like this, 
and make sure you check out the blog. It'll have all this information in it. So quick note is that there's just enough slight differences in how all of these are machined um, that these techniques can be challenging when you're using a thicker rope. So before you go out into a canyon and try doing these things, try it at home with the rope that you're gonna plan on using it with the device you can use and you'll find that maybe it won't work as well and you wanna to go to a smaller skinnier rope or whatnot. So what diameter is in your hand right now? This is a 9.5. And what did we use? Uh, eight. 8.7, I think that one was. And that is not Dyneema. This is Technara. Gotcha. Yeah. So, and I usually canyon with an 8mm 